Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for Public Affairs, Membership and Marketing at the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us for a discussion about sustainable communities. My guests today are Harriet Tregoning, Director, Office of Economic Resilience, Department of Housing and Urban Development, Carlos Monhe, Counselor to Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox, Department of Transportation, and Joel Bove, Associate Administrator for the Office of Policy, Environmental Protection Agency. Together, they represent the Interagency Partnership for Sustainable Communities. Thank you very much for joining me today for this discussion. Harriet, looking 50 years uh, into the future, a lot of infrastructure that's built today is expected to last you know, at least 50 years. Um, what does sustainable infrastructure look like to you 50 years out? Well, it's, uh, it's different than the infrastructure that we have today in a number of important ways. Um, it does a lot for communities. So this is really uh, uh, an area where we need the ingenuity of our civil engineering community. We need uh, creativity. We need tremendous problem solving. Uh, that, that infrastructure is going to have to be resilient. Uh, the, the challenge of our lifetime is, uh, is climate change. And that means much more uh, severe weather, many more strains and stresses on our infrastructure that's going to cause more of it to fail more quickly. It also means building very differently. Uh, you know, the, the biggest effect of a changing climate is prolonged heat. Uh, in many regions of the country, that actually uh, prevents some of our transportation infrastructure from, from working. So we need uh, a sustainable infrastructure that really solves a lot of problems for communities in, in, a, in very creative ways. You know, it's, uh, nowhere, I, I talk to a lot of young engineers uh, and uh, the challenge that you describe I think excites them in terms of their professional futures. It's their moonshot, yeah. right? These are an, a tremendous set of challenges that need to be solved for our country to thrive in the future mm -hmm. and it's really going to be on them to, to bring their, the, their bright minds to these problems. Mm -hmm. Joel, civil engineers are focused on developing more sustainable approaches to building and restoring the nation's infrastructure. One example is Envision, and this is a sustainable infrastructure rating system developed by the Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure, which was co-founded by ASCE. What are the key elements that should be included in an infrastructure rating system to determine how well it is delivering a sustainable outcome? Well, I think these are really exciting developments um, as we look, again, to integrate these three pieces, environment, economy, and society. And so we really need tools that allow us to look across and have indicators and metrics across each, each of those three spaces. So in the environment space, obviously, we want to be looking at impacts of projects on greenhouse gas emissions, conventional air pollutants, water quality, and so forth. Uh, we also want to be looking at how resilient is this infrastructure going to be in the face of a changing climate. We need to be investing smartly infrastructure that's built to last, not just in the, in the old sense of built to last, but, but built to last into a future that's going to be different than it is now. Um, we need to be looking at the economic impacts, obviously. Are these, is this infrastructure that not only makes sense in terms of cost effectiveness, but that's also supporting uh, local economic resiliency and self-sufficiency. Self and then finally, the, the societal dimension. How, how is this infrastructure impacting the livability of the communities in which it's built? How, how, how does the process through which we plan and develop the infrastructure integrate the various segments of, of society and of the community and allow for that participation? So we, we really need tools, indicators, metrics that can help us be understand how to make the best choices across each of those three dimensions. And the engineers and the planners of the, of the future who can, as they have been doing, continue to uh, integrate that, that participation and that self-determination uh, to an even greater extent are, are, are going to be the ones who create the, those innovative solutions uh, that we've been talking about here today. Carlos, let me come back to you for a moment here. Um, the three agencies represented here today developed six um, livability principles. Um, two of those principles address providing more transportation choices and supporting existing communities. How can civil engineers contribute to a deeper discussion on these subjects and have a wider impact on our nation's future? With the Department of Transportation and also our state transportation agency partners, a uh, great relationship with, uh, with civil engineers, it's very focused on what you can measure. Uh, it's often been very focused on the speed of traffic or the condition of pavement or safety recently, which is a great development. I think the harder thing to measure is how is our infrastructure network 
letting people get to work? How is it helping them connect to those critical services? You know, we did a, a survey uh, with uh, our metropolitan planning organization partners uh, and uh, communities, about three quarters of them are using some kind of measure to figure out where the gaps in their service are. And that's about all they have in common. Uh, you know, uh, they, they, it's really hard to decide what is a definition of low income, what is a vital service, an essential service, uh, how long is a, is a reasonable walk to get to a, a transit station. Um, uh, the good news is, is that a lot of the things that all three of our agencies care about uh, build on themselves. When you have a streetscape that, is, uh, that has affordable housing, that uh, provides shade trees, that, that reduces the amount of air pollutants, it's good for opportunity, it's good for um, or for getting people to work. If you have a bike uh, ped station, it means more people can get uh, to a transit area. Um, but what we need uh, a lot is kind of those standards. You know, what is, it, what is, what is the right thing to measure? Uh, that provides, no, it provides political cover to the people locally uh, to, to make decisions that are better for their communities. Uh, and that kind of credibility uh, that you guys have is, is, is a real strength. Mm -hmm. So the partnership was launched in 2009, I think. So you're you know, five years into it. How's it going? Well, I think that uh, it's, it's often true that cooperation and collaboration uh, among uh, different government agencies or different level, m levels of government might be described as an unnatural act. But I have to say, I think it's been personally, professionally, uh, and in every way very, very rewarding uh, to do this. And that some of the innovations that uh, this uh, partnership pioneered have also caught on with other federal agencies and I think what you're seeing uh, is a much more collaborative government, a much more problem-solving government. We have a lot of problems in communities that arise that that aren't necessarily the sole province of any one agency um, and it's it's very gratifying to be able to meet communities where they are and and address their needs and not have to say, well, I can't help you because it's not my department. Are you getting good feedback from the communities you've been able to work with so far? One of the great things about the partnership is that it started at the beginning of the administration and, and it's filtered sound down so deeply uh, that the, in the regional offices, the, the three agencies are meeting together, uh, like Harriet mentioned, uh, very, that, that we're starting from the point of what does the community want, not this is our program answer answer the you know answer the call it's what is your priority and how can we help you figure out how to get there yeah the partnership i think it has been a, just a fantastic experience for the three agencies and that there really is such a positive response at the community level and you know here in in washington dc of course we get together and 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 coordinate and and work together but the partnership is reflected also at the regional level uh where where a lot of the rubber meets the road so to speak and um i think the the positive response that we've gotten from communities uh in in re response to this engagement has just been very very gratifying and i know um, uh, my boss, the administrator, Gina McCarthy, really feels that this is going to be one of the, the real lasting legacies of this administration, is bringing these three agencies together in a way that, that is really going to have a, a continuity in this space. So it's, it's really exciting. It's very encouraging to hear. I'm sure citizens out there appreciate the fact that uh, their government can work more closely and effectively together. So thanks again to all three of you for joining me today for this discussion. I, AOC really appreciates uh, the good work you're doing. Harriet, Carlos, and Joel, thanks again for coming in today for a very informative discussion. And thank you for joining us. For more information, go to ASCE's website at ASCE.org. And we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.